What's going on, everybody? And I hope you're enjoying your Sunday morning so far. This is NYG Jeffy T85 here, and I'm getting ready for a big time pay per view that's going to be happening tonight down in San Francisco, California, for All Elite Wrestling. As tonight, we're on the road to the revolution. Yes, sir. AW Revolution happens tonight where we got 10 big time matchups, two of them on the pre show, and eight of them on the regular card. And we're going to get to see what's going to happen on arguably the biggest show of All Elite Wrestling. <clears throat> First, I'm going to just talk about all the matchups that are going to be happening on the show. Then I'm going to go over each individual matchup, and then I'm going to give my predictions on who I believe is going to win these matchups. So, there's 10 matches right now listed on the card. Eight of them on the regular show, and there's going to be two, show two of them on the pre-show. So, first off on the pre-show, we're going to have John Silver and Alex Reynolds of the Dark Order. They're going to be taking on Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta in a tag team matchup that's going to be happening on the pre-show. That should be a very interesting matchup. We know about the little feud that's been going on between the Dark Order and the Blackpool Combat Club. So that's going to be interesting to watch that feud happen. Then you got Mark Briscoe. And you got the Lucha Bros, Penta El Cerro Miedo, and Ray Phoenix, along with Ab Alex Abrahantes. And they're going to be taking on the varsity athletes of Ari Davari, Tony Nice, and Josh Woods with Mark Smart, with Smart Mark Sterling in their corner. That's going to be a six-man tag match going on between that match. So that's going to be very interesting. They've been going on a little bit of feuds lately, too. Now we're going to get to the main card. Chris Jericho versus Ricky Starks. Obviously, Ricky Starks had a big time win over Chris Jericho that happened at least the past couple of months ago. So it's going to be interesting how that's going to be put together. You got the elite, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, Mark, um, Nick and Matt Jackson, and they're going to be taking on the House of Black, Malachi Black, Brody King, and Buddy Matthews along with Julia Hart in their corner. <laughs> You got a triple threat match for the Women's World Championship between Jamie Hayter and Soraya and Ruby Soho. That was just booked a couple of weeks ago. You got John Moxley and Adam Hagman Page in a Texas death match tonight. Obviously, we know what's been going on between these two. I'll get more into that. Samoa Joe versus Wardlow for the TNT Championship. This has been a feud that's been going on for at least the past few months. Get into more reason why. The Guns with Austin, Austin and Golden Gun, the champions, will take on the acclaimed Anthony Bowens and Matt Ka Max Caster with Billy Gunn, Daddy Ass, Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett, and you have Sonjay Dutt and Satnam Singh in the corner with them, and you have Orange Cassidy and Danhausen. This is a fatal four-way. AW World Tag Team Championship match that'll be happening. We got a fur final burial match. It's pretty much a buried alive match that's going to be happening between Christian Cage and Jungle Boy Jack Perry. That match should be awesome. <laughs> and then the headlining match of them all, a 60-man Iron Man match for the AW World Championship between Maxwell Jacob Friedman, a.k.a. MJF, and, Dan and Brian Danielson. That match should be one of the best matches of the entire wrestling calendar. So now I'm just going to talk about each individual matchup. And then I'm going to go over who I believe is going to win the match. First, I'm going to start out with John Silver and Alex Reynolds. Versus Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta. Now, obviously, the big storyline that's been going on that went on before. John Silver and Alex Reynolds have been trying to get a one-up on Claudio Castagnoli, who sort of looks like he's doing a little bit of a heel turn right now. They obviously cost Claudio and Wheel Yuta the chance of being in the tag team title match on this past two, on this past Wednesday's AEW Dynamite. So right now, Claudio and Wheeler are trying to get revenge on what those two guys did to them because of the actions that they pulled on that AEW Battle Royal to determine who's going to be involved in the Tag Team Championship match. Who do I think is going to win this match? Ultimately, it's going to be Claudio and Wheeler. 
It just makes too much sense. I love Silver and Reynolds. I love the dynamic that they bring in terms of being a tag team. But in, I think what I think just makes the most sense in winning this matchup, to me, it's got to be Wheeler Yuta and Claudio. You're building them up right now. They're both champions in Ring of Honor. Ring, uh, Wheeler Yuta being the light Ring of Honor light champion. And then you got Claudio being the eight, the Ring of Honor world champion. They need to win more. They need to continue to build momentum. They need to get ready for final battle for AEW or for Ring of Honor. So Reynolds and Silver, as good as they are, they don't need the win as most importantly. So I'm going to go with the Blackpool Combat Club, Combat Club to pull out the victory in this match on the pre-show. Then we're going to get to Mark Briscoe and the Lucha Bros taking on the Varsity Athletes. So... This has been a feud that's been going on for a while, if you've been watching Rampage. Especially between Josh Woods and Mark Briscoe. These guys have been going back at each other, went back and forth, for at least the past couple of weeks. Including having a matchup one-on-one -on -one with Mark Briscoe and Josh Woods, which was actually a pretty good match overall on Rampage. So, who do I ultimately think is going to win this matchup if I had to pick it? I mean, it's obvious. It's got to be Mark Briscoe and the Lucha Bros. And if I had to pick who is going to take the pin, I think Mark Briscoe, because of the way that they've been building him up lately, especially on Ring of Honor shows and especially on AEW uh, Rampage, I do believe that Mark Briscoe is going to ultimately get the victory and he's going to be pinning Ari Davari in the matchup of the, vars of the uh, Varsity Athletes. So I think that Mark Briscoe and the Lucha Bros ultimately are going to get the victory over the, jo the Varsity Athletes, Josh Woods, Tony Nese, and Ari Davari with Mark Briscoe getting the pin on Ari Davari. <laughs> now it's time to get to the main card. And I'm going to start out with some of the undercard matchups first. First, I'm going to start out with Chris Jericho and Ricky Starks. This has been a match that, in some ways, in my opinion, I don't understand why they're doing this because Ricky Starks already beat Chris Jericho months ago when they had a one-on-one -on -one matchup. I don't understand why this match is taking place. I don't understand what's the the build of this matchup has been very lackluster to be, you know, going towards the end of it. I don't I don't get where we're going with this and why we're having a rematch. Plus, a very interesting trademark was made because the Jericho Appreciation Society has been banned from ringside. But Jericho filed a trademark for Jericho. And if anybody remembers what Jericho is, go check out WWE back in the early to mid-2010s to know what Jericho show is or Jericho is. Ricky Starks has no business losing this match. Plain and simple. Jericho should be making Ricky Starks look like a million bucks. There's no reason why Rick, Ricky Starks should be losing this match. But because he filed that trademark Jericho did for Jericho, I have a bad feeling that Jericho is going to win this match. And it might set up something towards down the line at double or nothing. Could be some type of long-term booking storyline we got going on between Starks and Jericho. I want to pick Ricky Starks to win this match, but I'm actually going to go with Chris Jericho because I think they're going to have Jericho win this match because of the Big Show. I don't think Big Show is going to wrestle. I don't think Big Show is going to get too involved, but I do believe that Big Show is going to maybe help Chris Jericho win this match. <sighs> so I'm going to pick Chris Jericho to win against Ricky Starks, even though I'm very reluctant on doing that, but I just think that in a way, Chris Jericho is going to get the win. <laughs> now, I'm going to go to the six-man tag match for the World Trios Championships between the Elite, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks, Matt and Nick Jackson, taking on the House of Black, Brody King, Malachi Black, and Buddy Matthews with Julia Hart in their corner. This match is tricky because, in a way, neither of these teams can really take a loss because of the fact that the Elite just won the Trios Championships in a best of seven against the Death Triangle all the way back in the LA show that happened in early February, in early January. So it's going to be very difficult for them to have the belts taken off of them, but at the same time, the House of Black need a big time victory. 
The booking has not been there. And that's one of the biggest issues and critiques I have of Tony Khan is that a lot of these matches just don't make sense. And they're just being booked on the show as last minute additions to the show just to give him something. The booking of this match makes no sense. There's been little to no build on this. This is just put out these guys, let them go out there and have a banger of a match. And then whoever wins, wins. This one's really tricky because honestly, I'm like so on the fence and who should really win this match. But if I had to pick, I'm going to take the House of Black to win. I'm going to take the House of Black to win this match over the Elite. And I think they will become the new trios champions in the end if I had to pick. So, what's going to happen with the Elite afterwards? I don't know. What other trios are going to be out there? To be wrestling in these matchups. I don't know. But I'm taking the House of Black. To become the new. AEW Trios Champions. Samoa Joe versus Wardlow. For the TNT Championship. This is another feud. That in one, some ways. Too much hot potato with the championship. Stop and start. Obviously. Samoa Joe. Ended up taking out Wardlow. For the TNT Championship. All the way back. In December or January of this year. He cut the ponytail of Wardlow. And then Wardlow was taken off of television for a few weeks. No explanation was given what. No explanation was given about this feud. Then Samoa Joe ended up losing the championship to Darby Allen, And then they ended up having a rematch. And then Samoa Joe ended up winning the title back in a street fight against Darby Allen. This is one of the biggest problems. And then Wardlow comes back with an all-new look and it's set up this matchup at Revolution. I think the match is going to be awesome. I think the match is going to be incredible. But at the same time, the booking of the TNT Championship, I'm not happy about. As a lot of people are. It's too much hot back and forth, hot potato, nobody having the title for a secure amount of time. And I'm not, I don't like that. This title feels like it's just floating back and forth all over the place with no significance behind it. Who do I think is going to win this match? I'm going with Wardlow. I think it's just the conventional wisdom on who's going to be winning this match. Obviously, we saw the casino ladder match that happened on this past Wednesday's Dynamite, which was awesome. And Will Hobbs ended up winning the casino ladder route match, which means he's going to have a future TNT title match. So I think Wardlow winning the match makes too much sense. You're going to get a rematch between Wardlow and Hobbs for the TNT title in the future. So I'm going with Wardlow. I would, I mean, honestly, make more sense to keep it on Samoa Joe, let him build up that title even more. But there's no way I could see Wardlow not winning this matchup at Revolution. So I'm going with to Wardlow to become the new TNT champion. Hopefully he builds that title back up to where it belongs. Now I'm going to go with the tag team. Fatal 4-Way tag team matchup. And I have a major problem with this one. But in a way I don't. Obviously the story behind this whole feud. The Guns, Austin and Colton. Who faced off against the Acclaimed. On AEW Dynamite a few weeks ago. For the tag team title match. But they won in nefarious ways to become AEW tag team champions. Then they ended up having, a, they're going to have the rematch between the two teams. Now because the Acclaim got screwed out of the belts. Then you have two battle royals to determine who else is going to be involved in this matchup. To make it a fatal four way for the tag belts. And of all teams you had Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. And then you threw together Orange Cassidy and Danhausen, which in my opinion, why is Orange Cassidy defending the All Atlantic Championship on this pay per view? That's the biggest gripe I have. Why is Orange Cassidy not defending the All Atlantic Championship? And why did you put him in this matchup with Danhausen? Danhausen is fine for what he does, but it makes no sense why these two teams are in this match. The only reason this match makes sense is for two reasons. A, Billy Gunn is going to turn on the acclaimed tonight and he's going to go reunite with his sons, Austin and Colton, 
and B, Jeff Jarrett or Jay Lethal, Orange Cassidy or, Son or uh, Danhausen are going to take the pin. The acclaimed will not factor in the match. The guns will retain their titles, keeping the acclaimed strong. And then what it's going gonna, it's gonna to end up doing is that it will eventually set up a future two-on-two -on -two tag team title match at double or nothing. <laughs> with Then you're building up Billy Gunn back with the guns, turning on the acclaimed, and then that's going to build up that storyline for the next couple of months, which will lead to AEW Double or Nothing, where eventually I believe that the acclaim will get their belts back. That's the only reason why, the only two things that make sense of why they're doing this match is because you're going to get the turn of Billy turning on the acclaimed, and then you're going to have either Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, or in my opinion, Danhausen, who I think will eventually eat the pin in this matchup from one of the guns. I'm saying Colton is going to get the pin on Danhausen, and he's going to they're going to help him retain the titles with the acclaim still looking strong because it got screwed by Billy Gunn, and they didn't take the pinfall. So I'm going with the guns to retain the championships. Now I'm going to get to the big four matchups, in my opinion, of the night. First, I'm going to start with the triple threat women's championship match. Obviously, the thing that's going on with this whole entire feud, the match is just like randomly put together, but in a way, it makes a little sense. Jamie Hayter, who is with Britt Baker, Soraya, who's with Tony Storm, and then you got Ruby Soho, who is in the middle. There's been teasing. They've been doing a, a they've been doing a lot of Ruby Soho is in the middle between this AEW Originals versus WWE Rejects going on in AEW right now on Dynamite and Rampage. Soraya and Tony Storm have been spray painting the backs of these women on the show, which I think is ridiculous, but it is what it is. Hater is the champion. This is Soraya's first championship matchup. And Soho is sort of in the middle. She doesn't know which side, if any side, she wants to join. Conventional wisdom will say she's eventually going to join up with the ex-WWE women because she's an ex-WWE superstar. <clears throat> but at the same time, I could eventually see her not doing that. Maybe she joins with the originals. Either way, this is definitely something to monitor for the time being. The match is randomly put together, but in the way, I'm going with Janie Hater to retain. It's the only thing that makes sense. Hater deserves to continue to have that championship. So, I'm going with Jamie Hater to remain AEW Women's Champion going into Revolution, going into uh, tonight's show. Christian Cage versus Jungle Boy Jack Perry. First final burial match. This has been one of the most outstanding feuds on AEW for months. Obviously, this has been a feud that's gone on a lot longer than I thought it should have because of the fact that Christian Cage tore his bicep muscle all the way back in November and he had to take time off. He was in that sling the entire time. Then he recruited Luchasaurus, who betrayed Jungle Boy, who went on his side. Obviously, we saw the matchups that were going on between these guys. Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy ended up having a great matchup at Full Gear this past November in a steel cage matchup. Christian Cage ended up making his return to AEW Dynamite to take out Jungle Boy with the steel chair. And then obviously you saw the promo that happened with Jungle Boy this past Wednesday where he was pretty much digging Christian Cage's grave, which was going to set up I thought it was going to be a street fight or maybe like some type of no con contest or something, like no count outs or something. They're going to be going with a Buried Alive matchup, or for them, a first burial matchup. This is their version of a Buried Alive match. This is going to be awesome. This feud has been awesome. Christian Cage has been killing it as a heel. Jungle Boy is the ultimate baby face. Everybody loves Jungle Boy, Jack Perry. Christian Cage is the ultimate heel. I think this matchup is going to be friggin' awesome. I expect this match to be one of the biggest matches of the night easily. There's no way these two are not going to put on a phenomenal matchup. And in the end, obviously, 
Jack Perry is going to end up winning this match. Jungle Boy will come out the victor because it makes no sense for Christian to win this match. It just makes too much sense to have Jack Perry get his ultimate revenge on Jungle Boy or on Christian Cage to get his to get the revenge and close out the storyline. So I'm going with Jungle Boy, Jack Perry for the victory, and he will bury Christian Cage alive tonight. <laughs> John Moxley versus Hangman Page. This feud has been pretty much built on the fact that John Moxley accidentally knocked out Hangman Page all the way back in the summer slash early fall in AEW last year. Then these two have pretty much been slugging it out for a couple of matchups together. Moxley getting a victory, then Page getting a victory, and then Moxley getting knocked out for a little bit. So this feud has been pretty much been built on respect, built on, you know, just past issues between these two. And now these two are going to be having a Texas death match. These two are going to bleed. These two are going to beat the hell out of each other. These two are going to have weapons all over the place. This is going to be violent. This is going to be extreme. This is exactly what you want to have. This match is going to be awesome too. This is going to be your tech classic Texas Tech, Texas Tent, Tecan Can, violent, destructive, beating the hell out of each other match. And I'm going with Hangman Page for the victory. Moxley don't need it. Hangman might be one of the next future cha challengers for the AEW World Championship. I'm going to get to that in a second. This is going to be match. It's going to be awesome. How Who doesn't like a match that's this personal? But ultimately, I think in the end, Hangman needs the win. Moxley don't need the win at all. So I think Paige is going to end up winning this match against John Moxley in what's going to be one of the best matchups of the night. And then the final match. The match that everybody's been talking about. The match that everybody's been building up of. The 60-minute Iron Man match between jo uh, Brian Danielson and AEW World Champion MJF. This matchup has been built up for the fact that Danielson questions MJF in terms of being able to go out there and wrestle. MJF doesn't wrestle a lot. He's more of a special attraction, if anything. Danielson is challenging MJF to say, oh, you can't go out there and wrestle. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. And at the same time, MJF is pretty much saying, the hell I can't. Damn right I can definitely go out there and wrestle. I can do it better than you, and you know it. MJF has put him into the grind, making him run the gauntlet for weeks to get a matchup against MJF, putting him against guys like Roosh, Put him against guys like, like a lot of big time wrestlers. And eventually, they got to the match that they're expecting. This match is going to be awesome. This is going to be a banger. This is going to be a match that we're going to be talking about for a long time. A lot of people question if MJF can go in the ring. This dude can go, and he's going to show it to you tonight how good MJF really is as an in-ring technician. MJF is going to prove a lot of doubters wrong in his 60-man Iron Man match tonight. And if anybody's seen Iron Man matches before, you're going to be in for a treat. You are going to be in for an absolute treat. Whether it's Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, Triple H and The Rock. There's been some great Iron Man matches over the years. This one's going to be no different. And obviously, this one's going to go to MJF. MJF is not dropping that world title anytime soon, as he shouldn't. He's the best thing in that company. He's the most overheel in that company. If it wasn't for a guy named Roman Reigns, MJF would be the best thing in wrestling right now. But I'm going with MJF to defeat Brian Danielson in the 60-man Ironman match to retain the AEW World Championship in what should be an absolute classic for All Elite Wrestling. 
tonight at AEW Revolution. But that is your AEW Revolution predictions, roll down, and card, and who I think are going to win these matchups. You guys let me know in the comment section who you think is going to win these matchups, what's your predictions for the show. You guys let me know. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Give a sub to MYG Jeffy T85. More news updates, chatter, and predictions for AEW. And turn on the bell for notifications. The next video we're short dropping on the channel surrounding the AEW. And let me know in the comment section what match you're looking forward to the most. What matchup you're looking forward to the least. Who do you think is going to steal the show tonight? And if you're overall excited for AEW Revolution tonight in San Francisco, California, kickoff. Pre-show starts at 7, actual show starts at 8. 10 matchups, 2 on the pre-show, 8 on the regular show. Headlined by the 60-man Ironman match for the AEW World Championship. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Take it easy, and let's go see what AEW has as we are on the road to revolution.